I'd like to um, get started with some of our senior night festivities. And first off, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for a great year. I'd like to thank the student body that came out and supported us all year. I'd like to thank the cheerleaders. I'd like to definitely thank the uh, pep band. They brought a great element to the game this year. You can give them a round of applause, sure. I'd like to uh, welcome everybody from Dedham. Welcome to the league. I think you'll find that it's a fantastic league. Congratulations on a wonderful season. Hats off to you. And now we'd like to recognize the senior cheerleaders, the senior manager, and the senior boys varsity basketball players who have been a part of the basketball program over the past four years. So we're gonna start uh, with the cheerleaders. Hi everyone, I'd just like to reiterate all the thank yous that Coach Keen gave. Um, great job to the boys basketball team this season. Um, thank you for having us and letting us cheer for you. Um, we'll start with our senior captain, Riley Myers. Thank you. She's walking out with her mom, Molly, and her father, Kevin. Can you give me a hug? Oh, leave her mom and dad. Ryan, look. Look. And we're going to have our other senior captain, Lisa Breton, accompanied by her mom, Nancy, and brother, Patrick. We'd now like to take the time to recognize our senior manager, Cam Hutchins, with his parents, Stacy and John, his sister, Hannah, and his grandmother, Nancy. Now for our senior boys varsity basketball players. First up is senior captain Tommy Leone, accompanied by his parents, Wendy and Jerry. Next up is senior captain Michael Ionelli, accompanied by his parents Kelly and David, sister Hannah, Jesse, and brother Jack. And finally, senior captain Zach Sasitsky, accompanied by his parents Abby and Rich, his brother Evan, and grandfather Irv. Irv is 88 years old tonight. Happy birthday, Irv.
Okay, thank you very much. We're gonna finish up warm-ups, and uh, I hope everybody enjoys the game. HKM TV presents another edition of Boys Varsity Basketball here tonight on Senior Night. We have the Hopkinton Hillers hosting the Dedham Marauders, and we just completed the Senior Night festivities, and we'll be back in a few moments to uh, start tip-off. We hope you join us. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. I'm Kai. I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H-Camp. Hey, I want to be a camp. We love H-Camp. And I volunteer for H-Camp TV. And I watch H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. We love H-Camp TV. Good evening and welcome to Hopkinton High School for tonight's boys varsity game as the Denim Marauders take on your hometown, Hopkinton Hillers. The Tri-Valley is committed to the highest ideals of sportsmanship and establishing a healthy environment for interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, or in a fans in attendance. Such actions include taunting, trash talking, the berating of players or officials. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. Thank you for helping create a positive, respectful, and fun environment here at Hopkinton High School. And now for tonight's lineups for the Denim Marauders. Forward number zero, senior captain Brandon Ruiz. Guard number three, junior Jack Tenonis. Guard number 15, senior captain Dylan Maida. Forward, number 33, junior, Billy Casey. Center, 35, senior, Juwan Lagund. And the seniors and the coaches for the Marauders is Christian and Barry Sheehan. And now, for your hometown, Pumpkin Hiller. Forward, number 24, junior, Brendan Kelly. Guard, number 32, junior, Ben McKenna. Guard number 15, senior captain, Michael Iconelli. Forward number 33, senior captain, Tommy Leone. And forward number 35, senior captain, Zach Zisky. And the senior captain is Dan Hutchins. The coaches for the Hillers are Tom Keen, Chris Banks, Jay Golden, Mark Sanborn, and Scotty. Matthew. And now we will all please for the stand for the player of our national anthem. HKM TV back with you here as we get ready to start this game here tonight between the Hopkinton Hillers and the Dedham Marauders. Hi, I'm Tim Laddick here as always with Steve Spector. And Steve, here on senior night, we just had a nice uh, little ceremony there for the um, cheerleaders and managers and players who will, will have their final home game here tonight. 
But uh, that's kind of an afterthought to the uh, Hopkins and Hillers clinching a berth in the tournament last in their last game, a win over Medfield, a 57-52 uh, victory. We uh, were unable to be broadcasting that one. That one was in Medfield, but sure enough, great news to hear that the Hillers have clinched a ticket. Yeah, that's good news. Big, a lot of energy in the building tonight for a Tuesday night. It's place is pretty packed here with Hopkinton fans, and we have the Dead and Marauders. I think it's the first time ever in the Athletic Center being new to the Tri-Valley League. And uh, right off the bat, we got the Hop Hoppington ball. One second into the game, practically, but uh, it should be a great night here in the Athletic Center. Congratulations to all the seniors. And I particularly like the, uh, the band being a musical guy. Oh, nice play. Uh, great rendition of the National Anthem, Star, Star Spangled Banner. So here we go. Yeah, I mentioned before the Hillers uh, punching their ticket for the postseason. They've won seven of their last eight after being three and six. Looking, things not looking good for the Hillers, but really have been impressive as of late. Now sitting at that 10 and seven record against a Dedham team that is 12 and five, nine and four in the TVL in their first season. As Brendan Kelly picks up a foul down low, draws the foul down low. Looks like it was on the floor. Hopkinton will inbound. Yeah, Dedham, uh, I'm going to date myself. Uh, I went to Framingham North High School back uh, several several years ago, <coughs> and Dedham used to be a member of the uh, Bay State League at that time. And, and uh, they're, they're a very competitive town, always play with a lot of spirit, tough, tough athletic teams all the time. So this will be a pretty good test for the Hillers, pretty good uh, tester get pre preparation for the playoffs coming up. Shot fired, just inside a three-point line. No good, offensive rebound, no good on the second chance. Rebound to Amber Sony for Hopkinton, and he is Oof. fouled just past half court. Did the old swan dive, uh, took one for the team there. Amber Sony bouncing right back up. Starting five seniors here on senior night. Nice, nice touch by the coach. Number 35, uh, Jerron Lagon, got some height that uh, the Hillers are going to have to deal with tonight, and he's already disrupted a bunch of shots already, a minute and a half into the game. Brendan Kelly usually uh, pretty good underneath, but he's going to have to deal with, with him tonight. Kelly the, collects another rebound, still no score here, about a minute and a half in. McKenzie puts his head down, tough the shot. tough floater, the tough bank shot goes in, McKenzie. First two points of the game, and then he almost forces a steal on the other end. Wow. Great recovery from Dedham. Number 15, Dylan Ma Ma Maida, captain, senior. That's uh, He looks like the ball handler for Dedham at the moment. We'll see how that goes. Ball inside to Lagonde. His shot just trickles out, rebound to Kelly. McKenzie again taking it aggressively. A little bit of contact, no foul called, and no good on the shot. Pass to a cutting Ruiz. Nice he tur turned into a block from Kelly. Block out of bounds, the last off of a Marauder. Hillers take over. Boy, up and down. Uh, I, think, I think these teams uh, feeling each other out here tonight. And, you know, Dedham, as you said earlier, Tim, 12 and 5. Overall, that's a strong record, 9-4 and four, their first year in the Tri-Valley League. So it's going to be quite a competitive game. And we can see the senior uh, section, they have the stands out, and it's completely packed over there. So that's hopefully will bring some good fortune. Oh, that's a lot of contact there. No McKenzie, call. McKenzie, another drive. No good on the shot. Now Dedham on the offensive end. An open three from the wing. Knocks it down. Nothing but net for Billy Casey. And that prompts a timeout from Coach Keen. Yeah, I think the call, the timeout was from from Dedham, Coach, for oh, which uh, 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 the referee pointed that way anyway. So interesting. Uh, just a, you know, five minutes and 15 seconds left in the first quarter, very early in the game. Dedham, Coach, uh, maybe wasn't enjoying what some, some things going on out there, and uh, calling a quick timeout after hitting a three-pointer. Maybe they'll be setting up a press of some kind to create some energy for their part, but. Like I said, a lot of, lot of Hoppington uh, support here tonight on a Tuesday night. Right. And a decent amount of Dedham fans here as well. And the cheerleaders are here doing their thing. 
And uh, so the 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 Hillers, that's that's quite a run, Tim. Seven out of eight games after being three and six. Right, absolutely. And uh, some of those early losses were really tough ones. So, but they uh, they're on a pretty good roll, and they, they lost a tough one a couple of last Tuesday night. Yeah, to Dover Sherburn, that was uh, I believe like a three point loss, something something small like that. But no, like you said, Steve, uh, three, sitting at three and six, this team could have very easily turtled at the very least. Yep. But instead, they they did the opposite of that, and, and like you said, reeled off seven of eight. And again, clinching that postseason berth, which uh, a couple of weeks ago didn't look so realistic as Amber Sony with a nice spin move. Nice play. Gets a layup to fall. Four to three now, Hopkinton. Another three, this one from Maeda. He knocks it down. And dead him very quick, quickly with two threes to start this contest. And they are putting a full court press on right now, man to man. Definitely a look, look, pretty physical game so far, Tim. Uh, Lots of ball movement here for Hopkinton. Not amounting to much, but good to see mo most people touching the ball here on this possession. Now Szyzycki has it with 10 seconds left. Hand off to Deloya. Not he runs into some trouble. Nice His shot. jumper falls. Deloya falls right into an open shot and knocks it down. 6-6 six, six game now. Great shot by Deloya. Though. Really had to, had to deal with it. Lagan, he was wrapped up before the shot. This one called on the floor. Looks like it's going against Deloya, I believe. Referee, I have my, headpho my headphones on. I could hear him through the headphones. He got <laughs> quite, a, quite some pipes now, making sure everybody knows who the foul was on, number, number 22. Dedham will inbound. 4-10 left in the opening quarter. Luke Deloya with that foul. The jumper is good. Mike Mansour knocks that one down. Dedham, uh, got two, two threes and another with three different players of a, uh, ooh, not, that's some contact there. Ambersoni, a nice drive. No foul called on the miss. Referee's letting them play. Lagan, the free throw line jumper, too strong. Almost got a lucky bounce in. This ball rolls out of bounds, stays with Hopkinton. Drew Rankatori coming in for the Hillers. McKenzie with it now for Hopkinton. Down two, 3.30 left in the first quarter. McKenzie tiptoeing that baseline. Somehow gets it to Deloya. Another tough shot for Deloya <laughs> and one. Deloya threw that one up there. Prayers answered as that one finds the mark. Now a chance for an old-fashioned in one. Wow, that was quite a play by Deloya. Hanging in the air for a month and a half up there. It was quite a long time. And up and over number 35, uh, Jerron Legond, if I'm pronouncing his name right, I think I am. He's got to be at least 6'3 or 4. And uh, definitely a presence down low for Dedham. But Deloya got it up and over him. Can't convert on the free throw. Leaves us at an 8-8 tie. Pass inside to Lagan. He can't finish on the shot, but fouled. Two free throws coming up for the big man. Looks like he's a senior as well. It's hard to read the, the, the program. I can't really make it out, but uh, Hillers are going to have their hands full with, with this guy tonight. And we got the uh, Hiller, uh, Hiller students <laughs> right behind uh, where this Dedham player is shooting, and they're trying to psych him out, and they were very successful at that. Well done, guys. 0 for 2 on that trip for Lagan. Pass almost picked off. Actually was stolen by Dedham. Uncharacteristic turnover there for McKenzie. Yeah, a little lazy pass. They gonna, can't afford to do that. Baseline nice. floater, good no good. McKenzie rips that away for the rebound. He looks to be taking Oof. it the whole way he does. And a travel called. Somehow I did not see that one. Geez, they let that go all year. It was a, called a, it's about to let the referee know that's called a Euro step that, that's <laughs> been allowed um, the last few seasons here in the Tri-Valley League. <laughs> Apparently not tonight. Yep. 
Coach Keen didn't agree with that one. Oh, nice. Kester from behind blocks that shot. Nice play to knock it out of his hands, not be hit with the foul. Dedham will keep possession. Mike Mansour, he had a wide open shot. He took forever to get it off and uh, really good anticipation by uh, Rankatoria, or who was that? Yep. By Drew. Tough, tough pe press by Dedham. Got to get it over. having some trouble. He does manage to get it up to Kester, who stops and pops a three. Oh, yeah. Knocks it down. Nice shot from Kester. Stop a little run from Dedham. Kelly selling out to get that pass. Lagan with it now. Crowd's into it tonight, man. I can, can you hear that? I mean, yeah, we see the full uh, student section. They're getting their money's worth tonight. The three pointer, no good. Kelly with the board. Good, good box off by Kelly as well. McKenzie takes it all the way, can't get it. A bit of a wild shot. Rebound goes to Dedham. 145 yeah. left here in the first, 11 10 Hillers. Yeah, a little kind of forced that last one. It wasn't necessary. That jumper, no good. Lagon fighting for it. Last off of Hiller, Dedham keeps possession. But Zach Zizitsky coming back in along with Michael Ionelli. Zach's got a little ankle bracelet, a uh, bracelet, ankle brace on his uh, left foot. We haven't seen that yet, so. Ooh, tough shot. Lagon hits the ground hard. Wow. No foul called, but a nice hook. Two points for the big man from Dedham. Need some help. Need some help. Kester's pass is stolen. Dedham with a chance for points. A lot of contact there, no call. The tough shot does not find the mark. You know, team's a bit out of sorts right now. And a blocking foul called. This jo one goes on Joseph Powers. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is pretty, uh, both teams are pretty fired up here. You sort of feel a sense of urgency on both sides. And uh, again, it's sort of a pre pre uh, playoff game here is get that get that feel tonight Lagan gets his hands on a pass knocks it out of bounds good anticipation by Lagan Hillers just need to keep their cool keep their composure they got six players on the court so that take care of that Kester the odd man out on that exchange. Jack Breslin in the in the game for the Hillers. Ooh, almost a backcourt. Good foot placement by Sizitsky though to make yeah. sure it was not. Kelly down nice. low off oh. the pass. Might have been hit from behind. Either way, too strong on the shot. As Dedham looks to take advantage, Ruiz drives. Lagan working nice down block. low. Oh. Kelly doesn't seem to be complaining about that one too much. Hit with the foul. Lagan will shoot two. Oh, some body contact. He got all ball, but I think they're banging the bodies, as you said. And Lagan is definitely altering uh, a lot of shots so far. I think Brendan Kelly's usually pretty good underneath, but he's he's made some adjustments um, because of the, the big man down there, and he hasn't really. I don't think he's hit any of his uh, layups as he has usually, uh, as, as he has throughout the uh, the year. But uh, game's early and they're making some adjustments. Lagan 0 for 4 for his last four free throws. Breslin, close jumper, no good. 12-11 uh, Dedham at the moment with just under 30 seconds left. Lagan, the baseline jumper, he knocks that down. Just don't make it a free throw and he'll knock <laughs> it down for you. That's definitely a factor tonight. Hopkinton trying to rush. Oh, nice but a nice Breslin. steal back from Breslin. It's five seconds. Pick in the pocket. And then Ionelli, lucky there, bailed out with the blocking call because he was about to be stuck in the corner. But block goes against Dedham. 6.6 .6 seconds left for Hopkinton to get a shot off. Shot clock is off. Pass inside to Kelly. He turns Gonna over. Another pass to Szyzycki for three. Just a bit short. Kelly now did not get a second opportunity off. So after the first 
quarter, the opening quarter. Dedham with a 14 to 11 lead, paced by their big man, Jaron Lagond. Yeah, and uh, they, you know, Dedham has five fouls in the first quarter to three for the Hillers. A lot of, a lot of contact. Uh, both, both teams playing some really tough physical defense. And uh, as you see, the Hiller cheerleaders are doing their thing here. Oh, yeah. And this, oh, the senior uh, Mike Tarosian, our director, cameraman extraordinaire, pointing out that uh, you know it's senior night for everybody tonight, the, the players and the Hiller cheerleaders. And then that last uh, routine by the Hiller cheerleaders, a couple of the seniors were at the top of the. I don't know. I don't know what the terminology is because I'm not a cheerleader. I haven't been a cheerleader for weeks. But <laughs> uh, no. Anyway, the, I think the Hillers have their hands full tonight so far, and I think it's going to be a, a tight game. And you can see that the Dedham's come to play tonight, and the Hillers need to answer to uh, you know what they've been dealing with, especially the big man Jaron Lagonde, and uh, Dedham also has a couple three pointers to, to get them to 14 points, and the Hillers with 11 points. And uh, Nick Deloya with a couple of really tough, uh, tough takes to the hoop. Oh, right there, almost a steal by Breslin. Hello. And Maeda drives. <laughs> Might have been partially blocked by Ionelli, and Sazitsky and Ruiz fight for a loose ball. A jump ball is the result. Hopkinton keeps possession on this one. Dylan Maeda. Number 15, uh, there's a parting of the Red Sea there. Everybody just cleared out, and the Dedham player just took it right to the hoop, didn't hit the shot. Breslin looking for help, picked it up too early, does find Kelly. Nice pass to a cutting Szyzitski. Nice looked block. like he wanted to dunk that one, but blocked by Dedham. Bill, Billy Casey, wow, he got up there for Zach because he was up near the rim, like you said. Lagon takes the nice pass, D. takes it all the way. Should have gave that one up, but Kelly with the great defense. And then a Szyzitski drive poked away from Dedham. Stays with the Hillers, 14-11. Dedham lead. Michael Pufakad inbounding here. Dedham with a 2-3 zone. Very active at the top. Pufakad had an open three for a sec, turned it down. Kelly down low, he's rejected again by Lagonde. We'll have to find out what his height is, but he might be 6'5". It's hard to tell. He's taller than me, I can tell you that. <laughs> Barely taller than Mike Tarosian. McKenzie and Deloya check back in for the Hillers. Shot clock winding down. Nice. Kelly gets the scoop lane to go. Finally, Brendan Kelly getting on the board. Well, Brendan's just got to settle. And once he gets up, he's he you know he's got a pretty good knack for using his body to create the space, and he's going to have to start to do that as this game gets along. And that's a good sign to see him get that first hoop of the night, I think, for him. Still a one-point lead for Dedham. Casey drives, takes the contact. Floater can't go, but two free throws coming. Billy Casey making an impact for Dedham. Well, he's, he seems to have a knack for going to the, the hole there, and he certainly did. He, he made up his mind he was going. And uh, looks like Mike Ionelli got the foul on that one. His first. Casey's first free throw is good. 15-13 lead now, 6.36 left in the first half. Second one incoming. And that one just rattles out McKenzie with the board. Very aggressive D. Hounding the ball carrier results in a turnover. Oh, look to me, it looks like a great effort from Brandon Ruiz to save it to Lagan, but he must have just stepped out of bounds. Hopkinton keeps possession, lucky for them. His Dedham's defense was causing issues. Nice. But then oh. they catch the Dedham defense sleeping. Kelly misses a bunny, a second chance, gives it up to McKenzie. Nice. He's able to knock it down. Great effort there to save the play from Kelly. 15-15. Hiller's tying the ball game up. Six minutes left in the first half. Defense! 
Pass in to Lagan. Double team on he him. He gives it up. Three pointer now for Maeda. He knocks it down. Nice stroke. Ambersoni loses the ball, but fouled from behind. That one on the floor. Could have been a shooting foul. Very close. That's the sixth foul for Dedham. Next, <laughs> next one will be a one and one for the Hillers, at the very least. Ambersoni stuck in the corner. Finds DeLoya. Still 15 seconds left on the shot clock for Hopkinton. Ambersoni drives, pulls up. And one. In front of Lagan. A late foul called. Two free throws coming down for Ambersoni. Well, I got to say this. Dedham is uh, swarming. It's, a, it's a, a very aggressive zone, and whenever they have a chance to double, a lot of rotations going on. Right. And uh, that's the second foul on Lagon. So that's a nice development for the, the Hillers. We'll see if he comes out. Doesn't look like there's any hesitation on the coaching staff of Dedham's part. No one getting up to replace the big man with two fouls. We'll see if he can avoid one over the last five minutes. And the Hillers maybe can start going to going at him and see if they get a third foul on him. That's a, that would be a really good uh, strategy. Lagan's jumper, a bit too strong. Looks like it went off of a off of a Marauder. Hopkinton will take over. The Hillers, Hiller uh, section of the athletic center wanted to let them. Everybody know that that was an air ball, <laughs> which it was. Nice. Zizitsky drives, plows right into Lagan, and that is Lagan's third foul. And that's that's exactly what, uh, geez, that was right on cue. I appreciate uh, Zach doing that. I, I was kind of rooting for a third foul on him, and there you go. He's got a. I mean, Zach, Zach created a lot of that contact, but Lagan wasn't set, so and it looks like they got to have a couple. Right, there, there is a point that you can't just charge into someone. That, that looked, uh, Szyzinski looked a little out of control, but to your point, uh, Lagan was not set. Ref erred on your side there, and now Lagan <laughs> is uh, sitting down as Mark Rella takes his place. Eighteen seventy, uh, eighteen seventeen, uh, Dedham. <laughs> Just under five minutes I'll, I'll take a 70 to 18 yeah, lead. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Ruiz finds help from the three-point line. No good on the shot. And Rankatori loses the ball out of bounds. Stays with Dedham. 437 left. Relatively low score in first half. 18-17, Dedham lead. Yeah, again, that's a huge development because Lagan was, was was really disrupting a lot of things down low. So I think there's an opportunity in the next four minutes, whether we'll see, I mean, it's unlikely we'll see Lagan come back in the game. That, that wouldn't make sense if they're going to take him out. So there's a Hiller opportunity to maybe take things inside a little bit. Uh, Lagan was also Ooh, dead in contact there. As Ruiz drives and gets fouled, two free throws coming. Uh, Lagan was also there best offensive player too. We had some three pointers from Dedham, but he was hitting uh, from inside, from uh, pretty much everywhere from the foul line, like, foul line, like I said earlier. Probably close to 10 of, uh, eight, 10 of Dedham's 18 points here. So they're gonna have to replace him offensively and defensively, which easier said than done from the looks of it. And here's a good strategy by Coach uh, Keen. Uh bringing Brendan Kelly back in with four minutes and 18 seconds left in the half because it's not as uh, clogged up in the middle. And Brendan, uh, I think, can have a little bit better success right. without the Dedham's big man in there. Right. We saw Mark Rella, number 34, replace Lagon for Dedham. He's a big big man himself. We are not, we haven't seen him play much. We'll see what he can do against Kelly. So still no picnic for Kelly, but certainly definitely easier with Lagon sitting on the bench for these final four minutes. Nice. Arizona drives McKenzie, and, and hey, there's a, an answer right there. 
as McKenzie hit and won. Foul goes to Rella. Now a chance for McKenzie to make it a three-point play. Well, Brendan, uh, I'm sorry. Um, ben. Ben, thank you. <laughs> ben anticipated the, the contact, knew it was going to happen, but he, he, he planned for it. Oh, nice, nice roll. Nice three-point play. And uh, kept his body under control, which was key, and uh, got the natural three-point play. And Hopkinton retakes the lead. 20 to 19 now, just under four minutes left. Nice play. Nice shot. Nice. Tavares is no good, at but now McKenzie with the board, and he's pushing Hopkins' offense, forcing the issue. And he takes the three, knocks it down. Ben McKenzie. Nice shot. That's Ben's game. A lot of contact there. Picked off by Amersoni, somehow nothing called. Now he charges down oh. the other end. Oh my. And uh, travel called, this uh, called against Amersoni. I, I, I would have called an offensive foul against him myself. I saw him kind of throw his arm out. But travel is, travel is the call and Dedham will take over. Nice block. A lot of wild takes to the hoop now for both teams. Kelly now losing the ball. Somehow McKenzie recovers it. Kester for three. Mm, Just rattles up. out. Wow. And somehow, Kelly, Kelly, if anything, it looked like Kelly <laughs> probably went over the back there, uh, over the smaller Brian Tavares. Oh, I guess that's what it is, yep. Okay, they, yep, all right. I think he Must, it might, might have just pointed the wrong way. Yeah. And that's two fouls on Brendan, so uh, with three minutes. So that plan kind of backfired just, just a bit. I mean, still only two fouls, not very manageable for them, and they still have Zizitsky down there to force the issue. But, yep, M Kelly does pick up that second foul, and he takes a seat. There's a push off. Ooh, almost a travel. That's a travel. A lot of things being let go here. A lot of contact. Yeah. Coach Keen was emphatic about that. McKenzie, the three, just a bit short off the front of the rim. Three minutes left now. And this time a charge called as Ben McKenzie takes a nice hit. And he hits the floor. A turnover there for Dedham. McKenzie coming out. Breslin coming in. An animated officiating crew here tonight. Very. <laughs> yeah, but they're getting their game on for playoffs coming up in <laughs> another week or two. We have three, three referees uh, getting ready for the playoffs and one. Oh, Sazitsky, a nice drive. Took a bunch of contact, though. No good on the shot, but two free throws coming for the Hopkinton senior. Hillers, uh, after being down by a few earlier, find themselves with a four-point lead, 23-19, 2.37 left in the half. Free throws are critical here. Get the senior leadership here with Zach Sazitsky at the line. This is where the game is make, make it or break it all game, especially as the game gets along. But it's a good sign to, to see the free throws going down for the Hillers. 2.30 left here in the half now. Dedham That's breaks the press and a wild shot. Too strong. Hopkinton with the rebound. Ambersoni now, he takes it past to Kester. Nice. His three, good. All of a now sudden. a nine point lead for Hopkinton. Like you said, see all of a sudden, almost a double digit lead for the Hillers. Dedham's offense a bit out of sorts. Offense, oh. That could have gone either way there. I mean, I wish we we always wish we have the benefit of instant replay, but I, maybe if I saw that one, I would say he was too close to the hoop, kind of restricted zone thing. But right. again, we don't have that benefit. So two free throws coming for Dedham. First one knocked down from Mansour. 28 to 20, Hopkinton lead. 2:07 left here in the first half. David Logan, captain, first, first time in for Dedham. Yeah, well, I, as I said a few minutes ago, with, with the, uh, the big man 
on the bench for the last five minutes of the half. The Hillers have taken advantage of that, up by seven points, two minutes left in the half. Ambersoni pulls up quick, just a bit short. A lot of contact there, Breslin. Breslin's arms get a little too high there, almost around the neck of the Dedham player. Maeda, and a foul called, and... It's a one and one Quickly, the fouls have picked up. Yep, like you said, a one and one coming for Maeda. We'll see what he can do with the opportunity. As Puvacad, McKenzie, and Deloya come back out onto the court for Hopkinton. Little platoon shift there for the Hillers. No good on the opening shot. Hillers turn the ball over. LaFleuria passes, but not much movement. And a turnover there. Maeda over to the corner for three. Ooh. That one way off the mark. Ball out of bounds, stays with the Hillers. Good idea on that pass. <laughs> I really had to thread the needle to get it <coughs> down to uh, Michael Ionelli, who was looking for the, be on the receiving end of that. Just couldn't connect as the dead end player tipped out of bounds. McKenzie had down low, had a second, wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do with it. Ionelli stuck in no man's land on the drive, turned the ball over. Yeah, kind of dribbled into, like you said, in a tough spot and almost kind of gave up any opportunity to do anything except to give up the ball, and there wasn't any place to go with it. Oh, there's a nice steal. Puvaka with the steal, looking for help. Good idea He there. takes a nice cut towards the middle. Nice! Somehow, Ionelli in the middle of the air. Redirects his body, knocks down the lay-in. Great hard, effort. That was a heck of a shot. And then Puvacod knocks the pass out of bounds. 36 seconds left. Hiller's up nine again. Looking to get their first double-digit lead of the game. It's been a great quarter for the Hillers. 36 seconds left in the half. Oh, nice cut. A nice cut, indeed. From Corey Killery. As he calmly sinks in the layup. 30-23. About a one Ooh. second difference almost in the, the shot court. clock. And Puvacod, you're right, almost tiptoeing that line. Just get one last shot here. McKenzie calling out signals. They're looking to double every, every time they get a shot. Puvacod over in the corner for three. Oh. New shot, nothing but net. A 10 point lead now for Hopkinton as the prayer from Dedham goes unanswered. Wow. A 33 to 23 lead for the Hopkins and Hillers. Really kind of turning around that first quarter. I gotta say, uh, that was a heck of a shot by uh, Puvacad. Really brings some, some positive mojo into the locker room at the halftime. The Hillers outscored Dedham 22 to nine in the second quarter. So that's what the doctor ordered, yep. giving him a 10 for point sure. lead. And we have the Hiller cheerleaders with a little bit of a routine here for us. Nicely done, Hiller girls. Yeah, but Steve, like you said, that uh, a big, big turnaround there in that second quarter. You said outscored 22 to nine. That's quite a difference. I mean, obviously we see now the Hillers with a 10 point lead, but really I think most of that came in. I think you agree when Lagan took that uh, trip to the bench there for the final five or six minutes of the opening half. And really Hopkins took advantage. They did, and you know, I think if they can, uh, that, was, that was a huge break for the Hillers. And again, you go back to that play by Sazitsky, taking it right, a right. little bit out of control at that, on that particular play. Took one for the team, as I, I've said in the past, and he certainly did. But as soon as that third foul was called on Lagand, the whole Hiller team got up, gave Zach a little bit of a, you know, Zach's feeling the love from the bench over there. And uh, that, that was a key point in the game. So 
hopefully the Hillers will come, keep it coming in the second half, and they'll uh, pull out a good victory on a Tuesday night, senior night. Great. And, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see how uh, Dedham manages Lagonde and his three fouls. We hope you join us in a few moments here for the beginning of the second half.
Tim Halatic and Steve Spector back with you here as HCAM presents the second half of the Dedham Marauders versus the Hopkinton Hillers. And really the story of the first half, uh, Steve, we saw the Hillers um, have to deal with Jordan Lagan, or excuse me, Jerron Lagan, uh, but he got his third foul there late in the first half and that forced him to sit out and it allowed um, Hopkinton to, to retake lead. But I understand that you had something that you want to talk about, Steve, well, to I just, start well, the second half. While we have a minute, I wanted to mention um, a really um, nice event. You know, Hopkinton is about community and we all take care of everybody in, in town. And, and there's, a, there's a, um, a family in Hoppington, the Davis family. They have a daughter, Leah, who's going through a really tough time. And uh, all, the town's rallying around the whole family. And there's a, there's a prayer service this Friday, 6 p.m. at the gazebo in the town common. And I've, I've been asked to play some music there, which I'm honored to do. And uh, the whole town's invited. If you hear this and you want to come help a nice family out, the Davis family and their daughter, Leah, who's six years old, um, please feel free to come down to the town common this Friday 6 p.m. and um, it'll be a really nice nice uh, moment for the town and for the Davis family so I want to make sure we get that in for them thanks for letting me do that yeah well, and, thank uh, you Steve and then sure. maybe you can give a shout out to our camera and our team we want to take care of that so we make right. sure we haven't sure. mentioned them yet sure so. thing so on cameras we have John Ritz uh, Mike Tarosian Denise Antaki uh, Tom Dings on director and Samantha Dings on graphics and also uh, for Denise, she's also she's going to be running the marathon. She's also uh, raising money. I'm not fully aware of exactly what the entire uh, specs are of that, but she for the class of 2018, she's going to be running and raising money for that. So thank you, Denise, for that. I'm sure the students and parents appreciate it. Lagan back in. He muscles his way down low, and he is foul. Two free throws coming. Ooh, and that's the third foul on Brendan, so now right back at you. It's a critical, critical foul on Brendan. That's, you know, 30 seconds into the first, uh, second half. And here, here comes the substitution. Right now, Kelly in the exact same position as Lagan, both with their third foul. And like you said, Rankatori comes in to relieve Kelly. Well, Hiller's with a nice little cushion at the moment, but that, that can change uh, quickly as, we, as we've seen many times here. An offensive rebound for Dedham. Now passing to Lagan. He can't take advantage. Ooh, that's, that's a good call. Dedham rebounded his missed free throw. Almost got a three-point play out of it as Lagan was almost able to send it in, but then was fouled afterwards on a third attempt, but this one on the floor. Dedham still with a chance to score again. Yeah, Amber Sony kind of grabbed him. That was definitely a, a foul there. A three-pointer way off the mark. McKenzie wisely lets it go. <laughs> well, nice play and by the cheerleader. And a help, yeah, help from the cheerleader. Awesome. Play, quick Ditch ball. those pom-poms right away. Gotta love it. It's a heck of a play down there. <laughs> Dedham still in that 2-3 zone. They haven't really changed that, Tim, uh, all game. They, it's kind of a swarming, rotating. Oh, not really there. Yeah, that pass force, was not forces there. Forces a turnover right there. And Maeda with it now for Dedham. Good D by the Hillers. Trying to get the ball to Lagand, but great defense from Zizitsky. Lagand now down low, muscling it through. He does get it up and in. And you can see how much the Dedham offense changes when Lagan is on the court. And that's a tough matchup for Zach. You know, he doesn't have quite the height and he doesn't want to get himself in foul trouble. So you almost have to to say, hey, I'll, I'll let you get that one. And uh, on the other hand, if they can, oh, that's a nice block. McKenzie blocked, had space, but Lagan closed it off quick. And the fast break bucket goes to Tanu. Timeout, yeah. Good timeout by coach. And now Dedham down just five. Yeah, cut Denham uh, taking it to the Hillers. Uh, first couple minutes of the second half, Hillers are 0 for, 0 for the second half. They, they had a five point, a 10 point lead. Now uh, Denham's got the only five points of the second half so far. And Coach Keen, I think that was an appropriate timeout, saying, hey guys, we got to rally. Right, they might have got a little too used to playing without Lagan. 
as we see the uh, Hopkinton student section there, hoping to get a reason to get riled up. But they might have got too used to playing without Lagonde on the court because that last five or six minutes felt like longer uh, in real time. And uh, that's when, like we said, Hopkinton really made that run. So definitely something to adjust to when Lagonde is back out on the court getting what he wants down low. And then we saw him defensively affect uh, Ben McKenzie shot, rejecting that one back. Normally don't see McKenzie get blocked like that. But Coach Keen talking to his team. It's a long time out. Yeah, holding him out there as long as he can. It was a really long time out. I think got the most of that just on the edge. I think the ref was about to. Right, I think he might have fallen asleep for a <laughs> second, to be honest. But either way, Hawkinson back out on the court now, with still with a five point lead. Looking to like Dedham looking to double at the top. Yeah, like you said, that aggressive two man, two three, the There's top two especially. Nice. That's the play right there, yeah, Zach. A, a nice cut to the hoop from Szczytski. And Lagonde was a nice play by Dedham. Yeah, Billy Casey finding the, the open spot on the court gets an easy two. The strategy shouldn't really change. Take it to Lagonde, see if they get a fourth foul on him. That's got to be offensive. Oh! Got blocking foul called against Deloya. Oh, he took one. He, he's feeling that one, man. Hopefully he's okay. That was quite a collision. Two free throws coming for Dedham. Again, that, that was another situation where Jack Tanus of uh, <coughs> Dedham really uh, <coughs> aggressively taken to the hoop. Probably created the contact, but Deloya just couldn't get set in time. And that was a nasty, nasty fall he took. And uh, not, I hate to mention this, but you know we're 5:34 left in the second half, and the Hillers have yet to score in the second half, so that's not a good. And they've already picked up four fouls as well. Just holding on to a two-point lead. Uh, referees discussing something at the table and the coaches are kind of hovering over there to see what's going on maybe a number of fouls making sure a foul goes on the right person player and uh, that last one they had on Ben uh, to Loya, but they have it posted as uh, McKenzie yeah so we'll have to see what that's about so Hopkinton now just up two after being up nine to start. Ambersoni's nice jumper shot right there. Oh, too bad. Just trickles out. Nice. Oh, too but Lagan takes it away. Oh, the foul! Another that's a foul tough, on that's Deloya. That's a tough call. I'm sorry. I don't. I wouldn't. I don't agree with that one. To be fair, I mean these refs are doing a, a, a pretty good job tonight. But that's one of those, I would have let, it, let that be a play on in a soccer term, but that was a play on right, right there. The fifth foul for Hopkinton. That's a lot of fouls with only less than three, three minutes. Lagan spins into an open layup. Tie game now. What a difference he has made in this opening couple of minutes of the third. And a great steal from Dedham. And Tanous takes it. it all the way. Can't finish the lay-in. Wow. Somehow Hopkinton gets away with it there. Tanous, I'll tell you what, he had plenty of time. He kind of started coasting at the very end. He kind of casually put the ball up for the layup, and it helps the Hillers a little bit. Ooh. Deloya a bit out of control there, lost his footing. Szczytski, the open three, Beautiful. Oh, just out. rattles out. And Geron Lagonde, another rebound. Almeida, or Maeda, excuse me, She's drives and collects a foul. That's a third foul on Deloya. I thought the other one was on him, too. I thought it might have been for him, but they gave it to Ben. Deloya's got to get some ice on his body. <laughs> he's getting beat up out there, but he's a tough kid. Taking it for the team. Oh, nice. McKenzie, the nice steal. Ooh. 
Lagan somehow a, recovers, but drags that privet foot. Doesn't like the call, but a travel. That's a good call by the yeah, rest there. Yeah, his foot did slide. Good effort by Lagan to come away with a steal, but turned it right back over. McKenzie Ooh, drives, a, looking to get a foul there. on Lagan. No such call. That would have been his fourth. Oh, so that's, so I would, I would have to say if the let one down on the other end wasn't a foul right. and that was, I, I don't think that's really consistent. You right, know, that's exactly. all the players want to just know. What can I get away with and what can, can I not get away with in that? Yep, that one was a bit more a ticky tack than the stuff that they've been allowing or calling throughout the entire game. Yeah, that's Breslin's second foul and that was questionable at best. No good on the free throw. Seven fouls now called against Hopkinton, zero against Dedham. And Tanous with a nice steal there. That's and Lagan just backing in. And that time a charge that's is fourth. called. That's a, big, that's a big call right there. Breslin, you know, it's the little things, you know. Took He's a nice elbow there from Lagan as he was out of control, spinning into bodies. And no. his fourth foul, he will sit. So that's, you know, the coach is saying, you know, you shouldn't be bringing the ball up. You're six foot five or whatever he is. And, uh, and he got himself into under... In a, in a tough spot, and Breslin saw the opportunity and um, stepped in front, drew the offensive foul. You don't really see that on the score sheet. I mean, oof. But that's that's gonna that's gonna have a huge impact yeah, on I the game. So. I think so. We should see it right now. We'll see if Hopkinton takes advantage and goes on a run. I mean, there's other Dedham has other players, but tough shot. A nice take from Tanous. He gets his own rebound. Great pass. Another shot, no good. Tipped out of bounds. Looked like oh, a last man. went off. Well, of I think they're going to Tavares. Fix that. They're going to correct that call. That's off. That should be Hoppington ball. We'll see if they get it right. And when they oh. keep the call as is, and a timeout anyway from Dedham. 35-35. 3.06 left here in the in the third quarter, and it has not been a good third quarter for the Hopkinton Hillers. Well, I guess when you score two points in the first five minutes of any ha uh, quarter, it's not a good thing, and that's what the Hillers have done. And that's a credit to the Marauders of Dedham coming in here, coming out of the halftime pep talk from the, their coach, head coach Chris Frioli, must have said the right ma the magic words, and. Uh, some serious defense being played by Dedham, and they're just completely shutting down Hoppington so far. And again, we just said the big man Lagon has just got his fourth foul, and then the Hillers haven't had a, a lot of time to take advantage of that, but there's still three minutes left in this quarter. I doubtful we'll see him again until the fourth quarter. Right. So there's a there's a window of time where the Hillers can take advantage of that. Brendan Kelly uh, is back in the game. And uh, Here's an opportunity for him. He's going to watch it. He's got three fouls. Lots of strategy going on right here. 35-35. We haven't mentioned the score, but it's tied up. Three minutes left in the third quarter. Dedham inbounding with just over three minutes left. A chance to break this tie. Nice, Brendan. Easy, easy, nice. And Hopkinton somehow comes up. Breslin with the loose ball, but he's poked away from behind. Maeda, the heads up play to poke it away from Breslin. Hopkinton maintains possession. It was going a little small ball. They got Brendan in there, but everybody else is a. Ooh, nice. Kester knocks down the quick release three. Three-point lead now for Hopkins. That was huge. They really needed that one. They had, hadn't really had much going on offensively. Oh, nice. And Kester Beautiful. with the great hands. Pass up to Ambrosoni. He has a chance for two. Nice. Oh. He can't finish the lay-in. Great play from Kester to steal the ball away. Hopkinson unable to come up with points. Good D by Ambrosoni at the top.
10 seconds left now on the shot clock. Ooh, that's a, almost a walk. Shot fired, short, rebound easy, now to Breslin. Easy. Ball in the hands of McKenzie. His scoop layup, no good. Ended up running a bit into his own teammate in Kelly. Might have affected the shot. Whoa, nice play. A great scoop from Maeda. He couldn't knock it down. And Killery tried to save it. Stepped out of bounds. Hopkinson takes over. Now Kester will take a seat. And Ainelli comes back out onto the floor. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Great play from Ionelli. Kelly probably should have jumped into that pass a second sooner. Ball was knocked away from him out of bounds. Kelly will inbound for Hopkinton. Ten seconds on the shot clock. McKenzie fires the three, a bit too strong. Rebound to Dedham. 115 left in the third. Nice. Loose ball being tipped around. Oh, that's a great hustle, man. Oh, I'm sorry, I Ionelli, yeah, great hustle as he slid into a, a Dedham coach. He's feeling the effects <laughs> of that one. Could be one of those raspberries on the little hip. Hit point of raspberry combo on that play on I, I think he might be right. But well worth it. It looked good from here. Uh, great, great hustle play. Helps keep possession with Hopkinton. One minute left in the quarter. Pillars up by three. I don't know how that happened. It doesn't feel that way after having a 10-point lead at halftime. And then uh, Dedham coming up and tying it up. And now the Hillers will up. Breslin for three, Oof. no good. Mac Lind into the game for the first time, grabs an offensive board. Nice play. Saves the possession for Hopkinton. McKenzie driving, can't finish the lay-in. Tough shot, couldn't get it to go. 35 seconds left now in the third. Ooh. Ruiz drives, can't finish the tough lay-in. Ionelli with the board. Easy. He's looking to take it all the way. Quick pass to Breslin, goes right by his face. Not much Breslin could have done about that one. Ainelli a bit out of control. 22 seconds left now on the game clock. Shot clock is off. Dedham can end the quarter with a shot if they choose. Down three. Yeah, that's unfortunate. They, that would have maybe better, been better just to hold for the last shot on that play. So now Dedham has a chance for the last shot. Good D. Three from Maeda. Good box out. Hopkinton, five seconds left to get a shot off. Ionelli, the pass to Ambersoni, his layup good Ready. as the clock expires. Somehow, some way, Hopkinton ends up the third uh, ends up with after the third quarter up 40 to 35. After giving up a 10-point lead to start the, the uh, second half, somehow recovering a bit of that. Up 40 to 35 now, going into the final quarter. Hey, Tim, I mean, oh, yeah, well, we're going to just have a little 50-50 uh, raffle here. It's like Sam Cody. And the winner is 8025044. 8025044. Sam Cody with the uh, doing the honors on the 50-50 raffle. And it looked like a lot of tickets in that bucket, so <laughs> somebody's probably in pretty good shape uh, going home with a little bit of green. But uh, the Hillers, you know, after this, the, in the, it's been sort of an off again, on again situation. They started off with 11 points in the first quarter, 22 points in the second quarter, and then seven in the last this last quarter. But the good news is they they only they held Dedham to 12 points, and they they still have a five point lead going into the fourth quarter, and have a little bit of momentum going right now. So again, uh, Dedham's big man is still on the bench with four fouls. So. Uh, right. Still an opportunity. Yep, still on the bench. 
Hopkinton a chance to increase that lead here at the beginning of this fourth quarter. And we just want to give a shout out to Mary Arnott stepping in for some help on the cameras, relieving Mike Terosian. Now Hopkinton will be shooting free throws as Ionelli drove and was hit with some, uh, drew the foul while, uh, while driving two free throws coming now for Hopkinton. First mm. one just rattles in somehow, hits the front of the rim and goes in. It's a nice shooter's touch there. That one got away. Second one, no Ooh, Looks good. like Dedham lost it. And Dedham loses it out of bounds. Ruiz, the last one to touch it. Hillers with a six-point lead, 7.30 left in the game. And it looks like Dedham's players uh, Ruiz's leg was over the line when he stepped on the ball. Got a, a warning of some kind from the referee there. Well, I think the refs, they, they give him a warning, and if they do it again, Is it's it a technical. technical? Yep. yep, okay. So that time, Ruiz well behind the line. Hopkinton gets it in, 7.20 left here in this final quarter. Hopkinton with a six-point lead. Looking to oh, move the record to 11-7 and seven now overall. Ionelli tried to thread the needle. It really wasn't there, but fortunately, it's still Hiller ball here. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Lots of room. Lind inside. Nice kick out to Ambersoni. Yes. He knocks down the three. The second of the night. The other you know, one was right before the half. Uh, That's big, big time right there. A very interesting lineup now as I look out there for the Hillers. Tough shot. Brandon Ruiz with a. Euro step and a half, but that's a heck of a shot by the Dedham player. Ambersoni down low over to Kester. His three knocks it down. Nice play. Ooh, nice block by Ianelli. Nice. Now Lynn down there forcing Another block. the issue. That's that should have be been a jump. That should have been ball. a jump Good ball, call. and it was. Referee took a second, but got in there with the right call. I think they were just kind of shocked at what happened for a second. Mac Great Lynn. defense from Lynn down low. That's big minutes from him. He hasn't played a lot tonight, but when he's been in there, he's been very effective, and he's feeling the love on the bench. His teammates appreciating his efforts. And a uh, couple block shots in a row giving him, giving the team a little lift. A 10-point lead now for Hopkinton. Pubakai from three. Oh. He knocks it down. 13-point lead for the Hillers. Lagan back out on the floor, it doesn't matter. Ball poked away, Ambersoni with a steal now. He gives it up to McKenzie, McKenzie's reverse. A late foul called. And now a chance for Hopkinson to make it a 15 point lead. Wow, that's How good. did that happen? That was really quick, you like to turn your head and you turn around and all of a sudden the Hillers, well, it's pretty. It's like anything is contagious. You start hitting three point, three different players hitting three pointers. That'll do it. That'll help. And then Ben McKenzie's knocking one down from the free throw line. 14 point lead. It happened quick. Right, this Hiller's team just exploding. Even with Lagon back out on the court for Dedham, not much changing. Now 15 point lead for the Hillers. I mean, that's 12 points in the first two minutes. Of the, of the fourth quarter for the Hillers. Well, I just want to point out right there the iron will of our uh, cameraman, Mike Terosian. He didn't flinch a second. Not a bit. Well, he could have. He, hard to see. He's quick. <laughs> Got some quickness up there. McKenzie with it now for Hopkinton. Again, still with that 15-point lead. Six minutes left in the final quarter. Oh, Bubakai, nice. nice drive, oh. lost the ball in midair, somehow got it back. Kester again for three. Oh. He knocks it down. Oh. Ryan Kester, everybody knocking down threes. That's four, that's four in a row, I think. Lost track, that's a good sign. When you lose track, how many threes you hit in a row. 
No good on the jumper. Dedham, now Ambersoni with it. He takes it all the way. His shot, no good. Somehow comes up with the offensive board. Puvakad open for three. He gives it over to Kester, another one. Bit too strong on that one. The wow. whole crowd standing up for that. Talk about Mojo, 18 point lead. I don't know how that happened. I, it was just tied up about four minutes ago. Game. As, yeah, we see the Hiller girls come in there, the bottom of the screen, you see them rolling by. I'm sure they're delighted at what they're seeing here. Tough play. As Lagan muscles two, po two points in there. 55 to 39 lead now for the Hiller boys. What a what a uh, transformation this fourth quarter has been. I'll tell you what, uh, the Hillers have blown it open with a barrage of three pointers and Dedham hasn't really done much offensively. Uh, this quarter, they they uh, they only have four points in the first uh, three and a half minutes of the quarter, thanks to some tough tough uh, Hiller defense and and just a big momentum sh shift here. And then just a you know, the game's not over, but that's it's quite a mountain for the Marauders to climb if they feel like, feel like they can get back in this game. Right, absolutely, and we see that Lagan has to play differently than he's used to with those four fouls because uh, over those last four or five minutes when he's been out on the court, not much has changed for Dedham. He's almost been neutralized with the, uh, the three-point shooting that the Hillers have, which is really the only way you can beat him is shoot where he's not out there, and the Hillers have really kind of hit the nail on the head there. Four or five three-pointers to start this fourth quarter has almost put a nail in the coffin of this game. It's close to it. McKenzie driving, looking for help. He traveled, turnover for Hawkinson. Good idea by Benny, he just ran out of real estate and ran out and lost his balance a little bit because he's, he's going pretty quick to the towards the baseline. Hiller's still putting pressure on full court. Could recover. Oh, nice. Pass inside picked off by Ambersoni. Easy. Puvacad. Should work the clock Now here. McKenzie. Kester again for three. Too strong again on that one. Puvacad comes up with the board. Nice. And now Hopkinton will look to utilize that full shot clock. 20 seconds nice, now. Nice, Brendan. But Kelly oh. down low. A nice block until got past the ball and slapped Kelly on the head there. Kelly will shoot two. Looks like number three. Uh, no, I'm sorry, number 33. I believe Billy Casey, that yep. one was on. <laughs> Ryan Kester, Amber Sony coming out. Sazitsky's coming back in, and I think it was uh, Pubacod coming back in. I'm sorry, I think, or Ionelli, I'm sorry. 17 point lead. I, I'm still a little shocked at how quickly that they got yeah, the floodgates open, really. Yeah. Still four minutes left, and Dedham's going to have to. I mean, I, they have, anything can happen, but anything can happen, and, and usually it's. Good. And we just saw anything happen. I think there's a nice steal. A great Ionelli. steal from Ionelli. Gives it off to Puvacad. Oh. He knocks it down. Wow. Everything working for Hopkinton. And they're keeping the pressure on. Maeda not runs a into a room. bunch of bodies. Somehow <laughs> gets a blocking foul out of that. It's hard to take two players down, and but he just did. I don't know who it's on, Zach. It looks like Zach's uh, second foul. I mean, there's a little bit of desperation at the moment here on Dedham's part. You know, I, I, I we couldn't, we didn't have a chance to mention this earlier, but you know, right in the middle, by the third or fourth three-pointer, I think it was after the fourth three-pointer of this quarter, and they were coming in, coming in a flurry of them, as mm -hmm. we said. Yep. I looked over at the Dedham coach, and he was just smiling. It's like, what are you going to do? You know? <laughs> right. Sometimes that happens yep. in sports. See, no matter what you do, yep. the other team is just better. And right now, Hopkinton 
He's better from beyond the arc at the very least. Definitely. Zach looking for a. No good on Szyzycki's shot there. Quick three from Dedham off the mark. Now assuming Hopkinson can hold on, they'll move to 11 and seven overall, eight and five in the TVL. Two more games left for the Hiller boys. As Kelly muscles a basket, basket in down there. Next game, uh, the Hillers will visit Westwood on Thursday. Well, that's a that looks like an offensive. As uh, Dedham collects sorry. a foul there. No, sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, again, on Thursday at Westwood, 6.30 p.m. And then at, at Wayland on Tuesday, February, a uh, week from today, they'll be at Wayland. So two more games, two away games, and that'll do it for the Hillers season, or the regular season anyway, because as we have talked about today, they clinched a postseason berth with their win over Medfield. As we see, I have a temporary stoppage on the court. Referees talking to the scorer's table. I'm not sure if... Uh, Did Deloya foul out? He says he's got four fouls. But remember, there was that foul that we thought was on Deloya that they might have... Yep. There might That might just be a mistake up on the board. So Deloya may be fouled out right now. Should not affect too much as the Hillers have a 21-point lead with three minutes left. Make that 20 as the free throw falls from Maeda. Certainly a great, again, great turnout tonight. Great crowd tonight. A lot of energy in the building here. Both free throws good for Maeda. 19 Ooh, point lead now bad. for Hopkinton. And then a travel on Kester as he hit the floor with the ball. Unfortunate on that one. He and a timeout now called from Coach Keen with 3.03 well, left. So that's some big uh, games coming up. I know the Westwood game, I think, is a makeup game when they had a situation with a, a couple weeks ago. They went, drove all the way down there on the bus and had some problems with the power in the building. They didn't have power. They waited and they didn't play the game. So right. uh, they've rescheduled that one or two times now. So that's going to get squared away. Uh, we're going to see if we can find out how the Hiller girls looks like they had a game tonight. I'm assuming it was at Dedham, but I don't know that for sure. And uh, they've got quite a season going themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there'll be a nice high seed. Hopefully they'll be hosting a home game. Right, we hope so. And we'll certainly cover that on HCAM TV. And again, uh, thanks to our amazing staff here. Mike Tarosian, we call him Tiger. Oh, you, that, that's his nickname, I made that up myself. And John Ritz on the Very cameras clever. and uh, and also Mary Arnott coming coming in. Coming in relief, I'm helping us out. Kind of keeping things together for everybody. And then we have Tom Dings and Samantha Dings keeping things directing and on and on graphics. So and Tim and I trying to keep our act together here, which is an uphill battle. Of course. Every time. Yep. An off ball foul called there. Kelly be. looked confused. That's his fourth. Three minutes left in the game, probably leave him in. Play the string out. Well, he's had a tough time. To, as, as much of a really nice player, Jerron Lagon is. He's a, looks like he's a senior. I can't really tell. Yeah, I believe you are right, yeah. He's had a really rough go on the line tonight. He's missed. I don't know if he's. I think he's made one out of about eight or nine. So that's been, that's been a difference. And that can be contagious. And it can be <laughs> deflating when you have all these freebies and you don't hit them. Right. Ionelli drives, his shot no good. 2.40 left now in the fourth. Nice shot. And again, barring any type of crazy run here, Dedham should drop to 12 and six overall, nine and five in the TVL. And Hopkinton should improve to 11 and seven, eight and five in the TVL. And again, uh, we've talked about it a bunch of this game, but uh, Take, take a picture of their season about a month and a half ago and you would, you would be very, very surprised at what you're seeing here today from the uh, Hopkins and Hillers. Good play by Ben. Just stole the ball from the Dedham player. Hillers not 
mailing it in in the last two minutes of the game. Just working the clock, guys. That's a good, good strategy. McKenzie getting whacked around somehow <laughs> and one. Finally gets the call. Looks like uh, the Hillers are emptying the bench here. Yep, Steven Maffiori seeing the court for the first time. Or he will after he replaces McKenzie after the free throw. Not sure who number 50 is. Maybe we can, I don't know how, I'm sorry we don't, he's not on the roster, so we'll. We apologize, but it's good to see some new players coming in the game. And as McKenzie knocks down that free throw, Maffiori comes out onto the court. 143 left. 63 to 43 lead for Hopkinton. Good box off by Breslin on the big man. Easy, easy. Dedham still playing hard over this final minute and a half. They forced the steal right there. Twenty point lead, one minute left in the game. Oh, too bad. Maffiori looking for help. They it's get it over. Wide open. And now just a minute left here for Hopkinton to complete this victory and a great win for this Hillers team. Got to get a shot off here, about five seconds. Lynn sees the clock, nice. puts oh, up a tough bad. shot. Yeah, it looked like it was going to yeah. find the yeah. mark from here, it but tough angle. Launches one. Maeda, nice move and knocks down the three. Calling and a timeout with... Uh, 35 seconds left. I don't know if it's just want to get someone in the game. The Dedham, Dedham coach called a timeout for some reason, but he. Yeah, it's, it's his right to do it. You know, I, he's got the timeouts to use. Right. Just makes it a little late for my date with my wife <laughs> after the game, but I, I don't want to understand. You could just say people were asking for autographs. I mean, that's part oh, true anyway. No, that, well, I don't know about that. But <laughs> that's a, that'd, be, that'd be nice. It doesn't happen very often, I'll say that. <laughs> But in your case, it must happen, you know, on a daily basis. Oh, I mean, the the voice, the voice of Hopkinton, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they only they only recognize the voice, though. The looks, not so much. And then Mike Tarosian signing autographs after the game, I heard. So. Right. Even if you don't want him, I heard he's giving him out. Yeah. So again, the Hillers should go to 11 and 7 overall with the win here. Again, with games at Westwood uh, two days from now on Thursday, and at Wayland a week from today both at 6.30. A chance for the Hillers to end out this season, maybe improve their stock, their seed, see if maybe they can get a home game. Well, that might be a bit out of the realm of possibility for the boys, but still possible. It's possible. Breslin with possible, not probable. Out. We'll go with that. And now just three seconds separate the game clock and the shot clock. To Dedham's credit, they're just not, they're just not giving up. There's a shot by Breslin. Gets three free three free throws. Breslin's had a nice game. He might have had one of the most critical plays that you never even know about, but he he picked up uh, he created a fourth foul on during uh, Legond um, early in the second half. Took a charge. Ill-advised right. ill play by Legond, uh, mm -hmm. dribbling the ball up. He's a, he's a center. Right. And uh, I think Breslin saw the opportunity, stepped in front of him and drew the fourth foul. And that was a critical play of the game. And now Breslin's getting a little rewarded here with three freebies. He's feeling it. He's got a little smirk in his face, a little swagger, which is a good he, thing. He just went to give his teammates some uh, high fives, and they were not <laughs> too keen on giving him free throws <laughs> with 20 seconds left in the game. So Breslin... High fived himself. Crowd got a good <laughs> laugh out of it. That's for sure. Got to launch it. A deep three there, just off the mark, and that should do it on the rebound. And Hopkinton, despite all that happened in this game, somehow comes out with a 20 point victory over a talented Dedham squad. 
Well, you know, what we were talking about after the first quarter with 11 points, uh, the, the Hillers kind of somehow put that together, and they, they were, had their backs against the wall a little bit. Dedham was taking it to them. And then the rest of the game, it's been a uh, really nice, nice uh, last home game for the Hillers. Look at all these people here tonight. Tons of great energy. Right. Congratulations again to both teams. Dedham brought their best game here, and, and uh, they, had, they gave it everything they had right to the end. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be seeing you guys hopefully later in the season and uh, in the playoffs. All right, so like we said, this is the last scheduled home game for the boys or the girls. Hopefully uh, we can host a playoff game or maybe travel to one for you. We will let you know if anything like that occurs. But again, the Hillers with a 20-point victory over Dedham. And for Steve Spector, I am Tim Palatic, and the rest of our crew, thank you guys for watching us and listening. We hope to see you next time.